Have you ever wondered how to get one of those nice wood burning stoves you see in some of those luxury glamping setups? Well, we're going to show you how to get one of those stoves into your tent so you can be nice and warm all year round. Today we're going to try this Robins Hunter tent stove. We're going to show you what's in the kit, how to set it up, how to light it, safety, how to clean it and put it back away again. Now you can't just buy a tent stove and put it in your tent. You also need the flu, but there's other safety items you need as well, like a spark arrestor to stop any sparks coming out and putting holes in your tent. You also need a heat shield to, because you don't want any of your tent fabric touching the very hot flu. That's one of the reasons why I like the Robins stove kits, because they come with everything you need in the kit. Some other stoves, you buy the stove and you have to buy the other bits and pieces separately. So let's see what you get in this box. Okay, so the first thing to mention is that as you can see, it comes complete in this case. Um, the case feels a bit padded actually as well, which is good to protect the contents. Carry handles, so everything is contained inside this kit. Um, it's very similar to our previous stove that we had from Robins, the Robins Cobook stove, which has been replaced by this new Hunter stove. Came in a fantastic kit like this. Now stoves obviously can get mucky, sooty and dirty. Having a carry kit like this, not only make sure you bring everything with you to the campsite and don't forget an important part, but it also means everything is nicely packed away in here so it doesn't get the rest of your camping gear mucky. Okay, so some more packing material in here from the factory. At the top here, we've got the spark, uh, we've got the heat shield actually. So this will clip on the top of the flue. The flue goes through here and it's got some chains to adjust the length for your tent. And the idea is here is that this bit goes on the flue at the point where the tent fabric comes round um, the flue pipe. And this gap here just provides that little bit of cooling and separation uh, from the hot flue pipe. Okay, instructions, obviously very important. Everything is nicely packed up and wrapped up inside this bag here. So very tightly packed and wrapped with uh, packing paper and cardboard. Let's try and lift the stove out. I have an assistant, please. Extra packaging material in the, uh, in the box. So normally you wouldn't necessarily have that trouble. And here we go, Hunter stove. Now, one of the things that makes this stove different are these extra glass side panels, which means it's going to put a lovely glow inside your tent when lit up. On the top here, you've got the hot plate. Um, and again, this can come off on where you can cook with. And inside here, you've got all the flue pipes. So first time here, it's obviously got a lot of packing material in here. So it's all nice and snug from its journey from the factory, which might be in China or somewhere else in the Far East. Let me uh, get out, there we go. So the previous stoves, the um, Robins Cobook stove, these were all black. And now with this one, they're nice and shiny. So all the stove sections in here, and again, it's about three meters high. Check the details on the screen, but uh, three meters high, I think. Um, so you can use this in a, a larger tent or a shorter tent, and just put the number of stove sections on that you need. 
And this one here is the one that goes on the top. And this has got the one that's built in with the spark arrester. So these little holes stop any large sparks coming out of here. It's also sealed on the top here, so you're not going to get rain coming down the flue. A previous one, it was open, so you sometimes get a little bit of rain coming down, hitting the fire. Um, but this one is a little bit more protected and, of course, nice and shiny too. Now, the other things inside the tent here, these, I think, are the drying racks that go on the side. So let's open this up. Yeah, so these are the drying racks and these will just slot on the side. Drying racks are, are useful useful shelves, putting things on. In the bottom here, I think we should find the ash tray, the ash pan. Yep, and there's the ash pan, which just goes down the bottom here to collect the ash. Now on the underside of this, we've got the legs, these little locking pins in place here. Get these out. One, two. So again, this is another design improvement over the previous stove. Legs a little bit more sturdy than the previous version of the stove. And they lock in place like that. So there we go. So here we got the stove here. Nice big vent on the front to let the air flow in. Nice, lovely glass windows around the side. Now, the first time you light the stove, it's actually going to um, smoke. It's got a lot of protective material over it from the factories. My hand's going a little bit black already. So what Romans recommend is you actually light this stove and let it go for four to five, uh, for four to 11 hours, I think they're recommended, to burn off all the smoke. And basically until all the smoke's been put off. So we're gonna light this outside, do the first test firing of this stove um, outside before we put it in the tent. Make sure the vent is open. And don't just cram a load of wood in there and set it alight. Um, the best way is to start the stove up gradually. Once we start getting some heat in here, the uh, hot air is gonna go up the flue, draw fresh cold air in. So it's gonna continually go that way through and not smoke elsewhere. Now, we find these little fire lighters like this um, ideal. E really easy to do. You get them in home bargains, they're quite cheap. Um, but they work a treat, these little wax covered, bit of tinder really. Um, I would start that and then start with these small bits of kindling. Make sure you're using dry wood, seasoned preferably. And uh, it's a bit blowy today. Let's see if we can light this. Long handled matches are good. And I put this right towards the back actually, underneath the flue. That's where I want it to start getting the heat going. So we got that in there and then just get some sticks there over the top and start getting those alight. Of course, safety, you want to have gloves and I mean putting things out. We've got a fire blanket here. Um, oh, there it is. Um, and, and make sure you get some, some gloves like this. It does get hot. Of course, the stove material will get hot too. And just start it lighting up. Now, of course, robe and save for safety. Always make sure the door is shut. Make sure there's nothing coming out. Um, for the initial light, especially outside like this, I'm just opening the door, just let maximum air flow come through. We just let that get hotter and then we'll start putting more and more uh, kindling in and then we'll start putting the bigger logs in. But as you see, that's cooking away there now. There might be some smoke coming out of the top of the flue, but there's none, none of the smoke coming out the front, which is what you want. see it's now smoking and burning off the 
coating from the manufacturing process. So it's good job you do it. Get it set up outside your tent first before you put it inside the tent. Had the stove burning outside all day. I think all the uh, smoke fumes have burnt off. Um, well, say all day, it's been about six hours at least we've been going. Um, seemed to be no more fumes coming off it. So I brought it inside the tent, of course, let it cool down first. And uh, yeah, it's all good to go. Connected up through the stove flue port in the, in the tent. As you can see, the heat shield is on there. There's little markings on the heat shield to make sure that fabrics well clear on the inside here and out and as you can see we've got various different heat mats and protections underneath um, rather than taking up the rolling back the floor. Safety is a big concern obviously make sure you've got means of putting out uh, fires a fire blanket is I think essential um, for various different forms of protection in here uh, again you know safety is very important um, it is obviously a very hot implement so if you've got children or people that can trip you might want to put a fire guard around the outside and I've seen some people and some of our viewers might be watching this. I know you've posted videos uh, and pictures of where you've got a stove set up in your tent with little kids and you put a fire guard around. Of course, the really important thing is make sure you've got plenty of ventilation, which this tent does have, um, all the way up to the roof. One little accessory I've got on the back here is the Robin's bearing stove. So that sits on the back, it actually hugs the flue pipe, the one that comes out the stove, which gets very hot. And that basically gives piping hot water. So yep, hot water in the tent as well. Fired this a few times, a little bit of soot build up on here, which is completely normal. So just get a bit of kitchen paper towel, dip it in the white ash, and then just rub it on the screen there. There's a lot of reflection on the glass. It's a lovely sunny day, so I don't know whether you can see that, but that is getting the majority of the soot stains off. Now for stubborn ones, you can use different cleans on them. On the one at home, we use a ceramic cleaner on the glass, but Robins recommend a diluted mix of um, white vinegar. It's a bit of white vinegar and water, and that should help shift some of the more stubborn ones. It's simple as that, just give it a quick wipe and uh, clean glass. And then you can always use this to help ignite the ne next uh, firing. Toast. So I think in this day and age where we've got 
lots of cooking appliances, you know, things like this wood burning stove is usually used for heating and it certainly does a good job at that. But don't forget, it's also a place where you can cook. So within the tent here, we've got heating, we've got cooking, we even got hot water, although I've taken it off because that was getting very hot. So hot, cold water, cooking, heating, all without electric hookup. And well, it's a nice sunny day now in the winter time or colder months, even if you can extend into like October half term or something like this, then uh, this, this type of tent setup is perfect for that. So we mentioned already about the uh, cleaning the glass on the stove. Um, what Robins also recommend is giving everything a bit of a very light oiling with a non-acidic oil um, just to help keep the moisture off of it. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll get a good cold clean when we get home as well. Um, yeah, that just helps keep the cast iron uh, water resistant um, kind of as you keep firing up with the oil over it, it just continues to build up a sort of water resistance non-stick coating on it um, but yes all the ashes emptied out um, so everything has been really good with the stove um, I think I will put some um, stuff on the glass here but one little bit I did notice yesterday is there was a slight gap in the glass here the, the glass does move a little bit just just so if you notice if you get one of these those notice a slight gap it's just these are slightly loose in here and I've noticed here as well is that you can undo this to take the glass out and give it a good clean if you want to as well these are just uh, bolted in place like so um, so yes yeah, so there's all this glass we need, we need a bit of a bit of a clean here as well um, but it's been a very good stove. Um, really nice to have like the campfire experience right inside the tent. So uh, yeah, guess the thumbs up. The other thing I should mention: the shiny poles still stay shiny. The shiny poles, shiny flue still stay shiny. It will tarnish with the heat, and um, again, that's that's to be expected. So we got them almost like going on a nice brass colour now, which I think looks even better with the with the stove. Um, Make sure as well that you clean out the inside. Soot can build up on the inside of your flute and you'll need to make sure those are cleaned out. Um, don't necessarily have to do it spotlessly every single time, but you need to make sure soot doesn't build up inside, which can cause a chimney fire if it gets really bad. One way to avoid soot build up is always burn dry, well seasoned uh, wood. Um, things like cardboard and stuff like that can actually build quite a bit of soot up inside. So, Yes, with the stove, they're very traditional. They're obviously a lot more work than electric. Um, as you can see, you can get quite mucky. <laughs> but if you like that sort of traditional camping and have that wood burning stove and the luxury that goes with it, then it's just well worth the effort. To get a stove like this into your tent, you need a tent it's got a, a flue port and can accommodate it, such as this Robin Settler Field. Now, if you want to see more details about this tent, click the video there. <laughs>